Hello, let me show you the fundamentals of ePlan that you learn when you come to one of our basic trainings and you learn how to use ePlan. First of all, the first thing you'll notice is that an ePlan project contains multiple pages. So it's actually a project management system that will handle all your pages within a project. The second thing is the creation of the schematics. So you, we will show you that using some interesting repeatable macros, you can just place them and the schematics will be created out of the box. You can of course add and modify things such as let's say here, adding new motors. Now I'll be adding motors, which this is the description, which will be translated in multiple languages as you can see. So it's multilingual capable. And I will just here put some um, interesting line items such as the power lines and maybe two controls, two motor controls. Now these control circuits, as you can see them here, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, are typically um, objects that have specific sizes, one horsepower, three horsepower, which immediately thinks for the next step because what we're doing at this point here is when you insert this circuit, you also specify what part numbers will be assigned to each of these objects. So let's say we uh, create a PLC page. Now a PLC page is often based on PLC cards, which can be found in our ePlan data portal. So you can go here in the data portal, let's say 1756 IB16 is already there. You can just import it, or once it was imported, you can find it again here on this insert center just by typing the part number. So it's going to look around for part number, descriptions, anything that actually comes up with IB16 like this. And once it's found, it will actually list you here, probably show you with a picture what it is. I want the IB16. I'm just going to drag and drop it over. And here it actually comes in different formats. So I'm going to use the tab button. This is the one I want to place. I want to place it here. It will number automatically. Boom, it's done. Let's say we want an output page. So output page are usually with an O. In my case, I want this to be a 120 volt. So 0A. Let's see what we have. And maybe we'll find some OA. Um, whoops, it's not 0A, but O, right? Might be better. So here it will find two devices. One is a 16 one is an eight let's say we take this one just drag and drop it let's see which one is the right one this is perfect so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to use here these two coils i'm going to take them i'm going to transfer them onto this plc page here right there and what you will immediately see is the fact that i can place objects symbols and these symbols are automatically connecting. We call these auto connecting lines. These auto connecting lines can be redirected and we can have basically any shape and form and they connect automatically. Interestingly about this auto connecting lines is you can also use things like symbols. So if you actually want to start with just a regular symbol, let's say a signal device, a pilot light, and you want to place this pilot light here and just connect it. Just the fact that it's aligning with it, you don't have to do anything. It will immediately connect. Now I can do better than this. This is an interesting feature of ePlan. If you actually know the device that you want to place, let's say here, I want to place a push button. I can simply drag and drop it. And I'm just going to zoom in here. I'm going to drag and drop it, rotate it in exactly the direction I want, and I'm just gonna place it there. Interestingly, as you can see that even the device tag is actually numbered automatically. So if I duplicate this push button a couple of times, I can actually say I want this two more times, and it will number automatically the device tag. So when you copy and paste things, the numbering is done automatically. Another thing that is interesting is you can start, if you don't know the part number right away, you can start with something very simple. Let's say uh, you know that you have here 
a uh, switch, right? A, a uh, sensor switch. You want a limit switch, a normally open or a normally closed limit switch. You choose which one you want. And then what you do here, let's say here, you just rotate it exactly the way you want. So my symbol, I want it like this. And what I'm going to do is I need four of them. So I'm just going to drag and drop a line down four times. So of course, these four pilot lights plus these push buttons here will have to be powered up with some 24 volts. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a line of 24 volts, which will be cross reference to a previous page that I have. So I can simply drag and drop a line of 24 volt like this and it will connect and the cross reference and the power will actually come from that previous page. So as you can see, cross references such as that 400 telling me that I'm continuing on line 400 and the 234 that is up here at the top are cross references that are actually generated by the system themselves. Another interesting topic is also the usage and the handling of terminals because the way we handle terminals is you can handle them one by one or you can handle them in groups by just saying, okay, I want a specific terminal, right? And I want them like two connections with saddle jumpers. So what you can do here is you can just take this symbol and simply drag and drop a line across like this, boom, and the terminal strip will be created, terminal strip 123. Or let's say you want to have a little bit more control over the name. So let's say this is a TB24. You can always call it TB124 and then just drag and drop this down as you wish, right? That's, that's a possibility. You can also, if you want to take these terminal strips and organize them in such a way that, you know, you recognize them a little bit better. Uh, I You can number them also at any point in time. So if you specify, okay, I want these to start with value 100, so be it, you know, it's, it's going to be a certain number. You want these terminals to be associated to the same terminal strip, you just type in once the terminal strip at the top, they are connected together. You can actually open them through the navigator and you will actually see something interesting in the navigator here. You will also see the terminals, the numbers, the jumpers, everything is actually very well organized. You can renumber at any point in time your terminals and just start them, you know, from one going sequentially or even taking over the wire numbers. So all this can be done very, very, very quickly. Uh, you can also organize where these objects are. So if you specify these limit switches are actually out in zone one, which could be a conveyor, a paint, uh, any kind of system you have out there, it's actually redefining the location of each of these objects, right? So the interesting thing also behind the scene is once you have terminals like this, you can select these terminals and assign part numbers to them. Because since I did not assign a part number earlier, you want to assign a, the perfect part number. And here you can choose which kind of part you want. So once you have that part number assigned, you are building up the bill of material. Now, another thing that happens with the part numbers is you can see here, for instance, I actually assigned a pilot light. So that means there is no part number yet because I only picked the symbol. If I pick the symbol, I do a device selection. It's going to do a smart selection. And this time here around, you can see that only parts that are actually uh, the perfect part number for this specific usage are going to be shown because what I need is a light, right? I need some sort of a, a illuminated uh, object that has that particular light. So anything that has a light will actually show up here. So here I have the perfect light that I want. I just select it, bingo, and all the information for the bill of material actually follows with it. Another thing that is interesting when you have a part like this, there is a configuration sometimes that is more complex. Let's say in this particular case, we have an object that has a few power connections and normally open contacts. So these connections are actually something that you can uh, select and pick and that 
automatically generates what we call the cross references here, um, which means from the previous page where the motor is, you can see here, there's a cross reference between the CR409 to 541. And you can see here, all these contact images are actually generated automatically. So you can flip flop between one and the other. So from here, you can flip flop to the connection uh, the contact uh, 3, 4, or L2, T2, and it's just going to jump there. So there's a link between these components. Uh, there's a lot of smarts behind the scene, and the last but not least is actually the wire numbering. This is something you do not have to handle in ePlan because the wire numbering is simply something that you have done by the software. So the software will actually associate the right part number even when it's a connection like a PLC connection, we'll recognize it and we'll put the address. So you don't have to worry about these. Device tags, wire numbers, cross references are actually handled by the system. Most of the time, your connections which represent these lines are out of connected and you don't even have to worry about them. So you have that automatic feature where you can drag and drop and it will connect automatically. Uh, which also helps a lot of, uh, of time in the creation of schematics. Now, remember, we are always thinking one step ahead. So what is the next step behind this? The next step behind this is and would be to generate a bill of material. So all you do is basically you pick whichever report out of the 35 different types of reports and you just generate those. So here you can see we have a bill of material that was generated automatically. And this bill of material will count every single component that is in this schematic. And we have also a second list, which is a kitting list, which will actually here distinguish between the components that are inside or outside the panel. So we actually do an organization by the physical location. So as soon as you assign a part number to something, it will appear in this list here. You can see, for instance, here, if we go back to our limit switches, right, which at this point in time had no part numbers and they will actually show up here as an error because these devices here do not have any part numbers so if you go back we assign to these partner these objects a part number well they will then show up so i'm going to pick here maybe an alan bradley part number like this which is a cute small limit switch you can see the picture as soon as you run again here the uh, summarized parts list and the parts list, you will get the zone one down there in the kitting, which will show you these two or four limit switches. Let's see, is this exactly what we have? Yes, we have the four limit switches. Now the data that you have here can now be, of course, very quickly printed. You can just print like this, boom, print, and it's gonna print the whole project. No worries, you can export it as a PDF. You can even export it if needed to a DXF and DWG for your end customers, or even better is actually to upload it here onto our free eView, which is a cloud protected area where you can take this project, upload it and share it with whoever you want. Because once it's up there, you can specify here exactly who internally or externally you can put that address here and say, okay, Mr. Boucher at eblancanada.com can actually view this project and he can also download it. So this is very important because remember, a PDF you send out, you have no control over who and will receive it and who he will send it to. Here we have full control over who can see it, who can download it and who can do something with it. Really smart. So this is... In essence, the basics, we will show you how to do your basic schematics with ePlan, your bill of materials, and much more. Thank you. I hope this was pretty instructive.